Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over with you a cruise line that I have over half a million dollars invested in going into earnings coming up. Now, before I let you know which stock it is that I have half a million dollars in, if you could just smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this video. So of the two cruise lines doing earnings coming up, we have Royal Caribbean with their earnings on Thursday, July 27th, and then we have Norwegian Cruise Line with their earnings on August 1st. Both companies will be reporting their second quarter 2023 earnings report, and as far as Carnival, they have already reported Q2, and no, my investment is not in Carnival. Now let's get a little deeper in. Royal Caribbean is going into its earnings week at an $102.38 per share closing, as of last Friday. This stock is trading basically at its 52-week high. Its 52-week high was $105. Its 52-week low was $33. Now, if you're looking at analyst estimates for the current quarter, it's $1.54. So we're going to have to see if they beat those estimates or if they fall short of them. And we'll find that out later this week on Thursday. When we're looking at the current year, 2023, the average estimate of all analysts is that they're going to do $4.76 of earnings per share, which means that $102 a share right now, you're paying basically 21 and a half times this year's estimated EPS. But if you're looking at 2024's estimated EPS next year's, it's 14 and a half times. And if you're looking at Royal Caribbean's plans, they have showed that they plan to do double digit EPS by 2025. So we're talking about at least $10 of earnings per share, which means you're basically paying 10 times 2025 earnings. So it's important to understand that Royal Caribbean at today's price after going up about 197% uh, in the past year is starting to trade at pretty much a fair multiple in my opinion, uh, just looking at this alone, not looking at uh, anything else, you know, balance sheet, other things, if we're just looking at a multiple. Now, if we're looking at Norwegian Cruise Line and trying to compare it, it's trading at $21 as of the close of Friday. This is up 77.9% in the past year, an incredible performance coming back, but still uh, falling short compared to Royal Caribbean's 197% or so. Now on a 52-week scale, it is trading also at its 52-week high, which was $22. It's trading around $21 now, and the 52-week low was $10.83. If we look at how they are trading on a multiple basis, if we're looking this year, 2023, out of 16 analysts, they're expecting 78 cents for the whole year, which would put at $21 a share Norwegian at 27 times 2023 earnings. So this is a higher multiple than Royal Caribbean. But then if we look at 2024, analysts are predicting it's going to be a dollar 59 cents of EPS, which would actually put it at 13.2 times, which would be cheaper than Royal Caribbean's earnings for 2024 as a multiple. Now, unlike Royal Caribbean, I didn't see Norwegian give a 2025 EPS estimate, whereas Royal Caribbean has this trifecta program, which mentions double digit EPS in 2025, giving it $10 at least of earnings. Uh, and with Norwegian, I wanted to dig a little deeper and see what analysts thought. Morgan Stanley has been pretty bearish on the stock in general, but they actually have a research note out that is expecting $2 in EPS in 2025 for Norwegian, which would imply it's trading around 10 times 2025 EPS. And this puts Norwegian and Royal Caribbean in the same place for 2025, at least for when it comes to a trading multiple. Now, Norwegian has its current quarter earnings coming up uh, first week of August, and analysts are expecting 27 cents for their EPS for this quarter. We're going to also keep an eye on that and see if they beat that or fall short. And obviously, that's going to determine analysts are going to probably re-rate the stock if they beat it. They'll re-rate it to the negative side if they fall short. So that all comes into play as well. So the bottom line for the multiple is Norwegian looks more expensive in 2023. Norwegian will look probably cheaper in 2024. And then uh, for 2025, they're going to look pretty much the same if analysts get this right. Now, RCL and NCLH, there's a lot more to it than just earnings. There's the balance sheet, there's revenue growth, there's how efficient these companies are, there's how, what's their pricing power. And even from a management standpoint, which company you believe has better management to execute on long-term goals for the company. So there's a lot to look at other than just earnings. 
Both companies are going to be trading, like we said, around 10 times EPS from a financial standpoint. So we're just looking at that for a moment. But there is a lot of other things to consider. So don't just use this as your only data point. Now, Royal Caribbean is the larger company. It, in my opinion, has a much better fleet of ships. That said, Norwegian has this new Prima line of ships that I think is a massive upgrade to what they've had in the past. So let's take a look at Royal Caribbean for a second. They build incredible ships. They're building the icon of the seas right now, the largest ship in the world. But it also has tons of incredible ships that are currently sailing for them, like Wonder of the Seas, which is the largest ship currently sailing, and the only thing beating it is their new ship, Icon of the Seas, in terms of uh, capacity, size, things like that for cruise ships. They also have Quantum of the Seas, Anthem of the Seas, Oasis of the Seas, Symphony of the Seas. They have incredible cruise ships that are massive, huge scale. They basically build the largest ships on Earth, and they are this very, like, family, adrenaline, adventure type of feeling cruise ships. They try to put really crazy things on board, like skydiving on a ship, surf simulators, robotic bars, really just pushing the limits kind of company when it comes to what they can do on these cruises. So they continue to build amazing ships, but their amazing ships are basically one-upping their other amazing ships. They're kind of just continuing to do what they've always done very well. Now, Norwegian is building this new class of ships called Prima class. Now, I've sailed Royal Caribbean and I've sailed Norwegian ships, and I felt that Norwegian has tailored to more of an upper class clientele, a little more expensive, uh, and not as exciting, not as like thrill oriented things other than the go karts and things like that. But they don't really push the limits, I don't believe, in my opinion, as much as Royal Caribbean has uh, when it comes to their ships and especially the scale of their ships. They're not trying to compete in who can make the biggest ship in the world and things like that anymore that, you know, they've kind of just ceded that to Royal Caribbean. That said, they have introduced this new Prima class ship with the first ship being the Prima and the Viva coming out uh, later this year, which I'll be going on the Viva in December. Now the ships have a ton of fun, exciting things to do on them. You have things like interactive uh, mini golf, you have things like a three-story high go-karting experience, but at the same time you have this really high-end modern looking feel. Like you look at these, even just the cushions on the seats, you look at the way the ship is just designed, the art all around of it, the sculptures, the uh, furniture, everything about it just gives this very high-end look and feel where it's still for families and has fun things for young people to do, but it gives that upscale look. And I really think they've created something incredible with that. So Norwegian has this similar earnings multiple to Royal Caribbean, which in my opinion, they don't have as good of a product portfolio as Royal Caribbean. If you look at all the ships they have and you look at all Royal Caribbean ships, I think Royal Caribbean has far better products. I think Norwegian has the inferior product in many ways. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me, and it all depends what you're looking for in a cruise. But on a personal level, I just didn't feel the luxury on past ships was high-end enough to justify going on, let's say, Norwegian over Celebrity from Royal Caribbean if you're really looking for that luxury feel. And if you want the family feel and everything and the adventure, Royal Caribbean just had a better product, in my opinion. So Norwegian has this opportunity with the Prima class where they're going to be really appealing to a lot of people like myself where I want a high-end looking ship, but I don't want to sacrifice on the fun and the family adventure type of things that you get on a Royal Caribbean ship. And although I think that's what Norwegian has always tried to do, I just don't think they succeeded very well in it until I've seen this Prima class. It really took the bar and raised it very high for them to a new level of luxury meets adventure family fun. And that's something that I think Royal Caribbean doesn't have. They have adventure, fun, family, all that, the best of it on their ships, and they have extreme luxury with Celebrity Cruise Line, but combining those together is what I see in the Prima class. So although Royal Caribbean is doing what I believe they should be doing, they're doing everything correct, they're going to continue to push the limits and make the best family adventure adrenaline ships you can get with Royal brand, and they're going to keep pushing the limits of luxury with their celebrity cruise brand, I think that they're just one-upping themselves and they have the same customer. They're not doing something they weren't doing 
in the last five ships that they've done. Yes, they've gone bigger, more pools, more things, and yes, it's working for them. There's nothing wrong with it. But the opportunity lies in the fact that Norwegian, I think with this Prima class, is actually doing something very different than they've done before. And by doing something very different, they're gonna attract customers they may have never got before that just weren't interested. Maybe they were going to Celebrity, maybe they were going to Royal, depending on what they were doing. And this is now the one-stop shop for them possibly with this type of class ship. And keep in mind, Norwegian owns other cruise lines as well, including Oceana Cruises and Region of the Seven Seas. Just like Royal Caribbean has Celebrity and Silver Sea, as well as also some ownership interest in a couple other brands. Now, they also both have their own private islands that differ as well, and I think Royal has an edge on them with their private island as well. Now, Royal is obviously a much larger company when it comes to market caps as well. Uh, revenue, they're doing more, they have more capacity. It's, it's a different business as a whole. So I'm not just saying here Norwegian is a better stock or a better company or anything like that. I actually think Royal Caribbean is the better company, but I think Norwegian has an opportunity uh, ahead of itself while trading at a similar earnings where Royal Caribbean just is continuing the opportunity they've already seized. Now, I personally have owned both stocks since they've crashed in 2020. Uh, I bought them in their bottoms. I've traded them a lot. Uh, you know, when they shot down all their operations, I thought it was a pretty scary time for them, but I had a feeling they were going to make it to the other side that we would get out of the 2020 situation and these companies would come back at some point. And I, you know, built investments in them. I traded in, I traded out many times from that point forward. I've had them in one way or another, uh, pretty much at all times, but you know, short periods where I've sold out and bought other things. So currently, Norwegian Cruise Line has not recovered as well as Royal Caribbean has. The fact that it's a smaller company and has this opportunity ahead to expand into a customer it may never have had before, I think that Norwegian has a greater opportunity for the next three to five year timeline as they build out this Prima class. Now I have sold off recently some of my positions in Royal Caribbean and have taken some profits around the $100 a share mark and have bought into more Norwegian. So here is over half a million dollars in Norwegian. It's actually over 600,000 uh, Norwegian, different accounts I have it in, but just to show you a couple of them, Norwegian, first one, I have 10,000 shares in one of my accounts where I'm up over 58%. Uh, I paid $13.30 for those on average for those 10,000 shares. Uh, so I'm up significantly, you know, almost 60% on that. I have 15,000 shares, which most of those were recently purchased. And that's why the price paid is at $19.96. This is in a different account that's coming out to about 315 grand there. And I'm up about 16,000, just 5% on that right now. And then in another account, I have 5,000 shares of Norwegian, so about 100 grand. And those shares were actually purchased at the lowest price at $12.68 of my accounts, uh, up 65%. Now you can see I still have about 500 shares of Royal Caribbean that I purchased around $61. Uh, and that's about 50 grand worth, up 66%. Now I had a lot more Royal Caribbean. I had a lot of shares that actually were purchased around $35-ish. Uh, but I have sold a lot and added to the Norwegian because I do believe there's a little more opportunity here personally. So the bottom line, I'm just more bullish on Norwegian going into the earnings and going into the next really two to three years than I am on Royal Caribbean. Uh, I do think Royal Caribbean is a little more bullish in a sense because their EPS will look uh, at, at a cheaper multiple for 2023 than Norwegian, but I think that shifts into 2024 as we spoke about. Now, Royal Caribbean is the first to report of the two companies. They're reporting this coming Thursday. If the stock goes up, I don't have a plan to sell anything that I have left. But if it does go down, and as long as the long-term trend is not in jeopardy, if everything still looks good, but the stock just pulls back, I might add some shares, Well, depending on how much it pulls back. I'm, I'm interested in building that position back because I do think the company is incredible. So we will go over both those earning reports when they come out. If you liked this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. And the last thing I'll leave you with is I do plan to check out this Prima class ship myself. I have booked, like I said, the Norwegian Viva 
I'm going to be going in December. I'm planning to see the ship and see this Prima class for myself to get a better understanding of how well it actually is on board and compare. And I'm not just doing this with Norwegian. I also will be going on a Royal Caribbean ship, the largest ship in the world right now that is sailing by them. It's called Wonder of the Seas, and I will be on that ship at the end of August. So I am doing both the best of the best from Norwegian and the best of the best from Royal Caribbean. I've done many of their other ships from both companies, but I plan to do the research to get on board and actually see what everything's about on their greatest, latest, and best ships. Now, if you liked the video again, smash that like button and subscribe. Until next time, guys.